Welcome back to Grand Structures. This is the Negev Desert. For millennia, it was a dead land, dry, cracked, and almost impossible to cultivate. With summer temperatures soaring above 110 degrees Fahrenheit, it is a land of rock and dust. This presented a young nation of Israel with an existential crisis. How do you build a country when more than half of your land is an uninhabitable desert? The answer was one of the boldest gambles in modern history. A grand structure not of steel or stone, but of water. In 1953, Israel began an 11-year, $420 million quest to do the impossible. They decided to build a massive 130 kilometers long artificial river, a national water carrier that would capture the fresh water from the lush north and physically carry it south through mountains and valleys to make the desert bloom. This is the story of that structure, a system of giant pipes, open-air canals, massive pumping stations, and hidden reservoirs that would become the artery of a nation, transporting 72,000 cubic meters of water every hour. This isn't just a story about a pipeline. It's about how a nation built a lifeline and how that single grand structure changed its destiny. In the early 1950s, Israel's dream of survival was on the brink of collapse. Agriculture, the lifeline of the new nation, was dying. Underground aquifers were drying up. Families in the south survived on water hauled in by trucks from faraway regions. The nation's first prime minister, David Ben-Gurion, had a famous obsession it is in the Negev, he said, that the people of Israel will be tested. He believed that if they couldn't conquer the desert, the nation would never be secure. But you can't conquer a desert with hope. You need water, a lot of water. The plan was audacious to the point of madness. They would go to their single largest freshwater source, the Sea of Galilee or Lake Kinneret, they would build a massive pumping station to suck water out of the lake, lift it over the surrounding mountains, and then, using a combination of gravity and more pumps, send it 130 kilometers south into the barren heart of the Negev. It would be the single largest and most complex infrastructure project the new country had ever attempted. The nation's entire future would be gambled on this one massive, grand structure. Before they could move a single drop of water, they had to move mountains of earth. This was one of the largest digging operations in the Middle East. Hundreds of excavators and dump trucks began carving the shape of this new river. The system was an engineering hybrid. In some sections, it was a massive open-air canal shaped in a wide U profile, 150 feet across. In other sections, to cross valleys or populated areas, it was a series of colossal 10-foot diameter concrete pipes. Over 11 years, thousands of laborers worked in rotating shifts, enduring 115-degree heat to lay this artery piece by piece. The heart of the entire grand structure is here, at the Sapir pumping station, on the shore of the Sea of Galilee. This station is itself an engineering marvel, hidden underground. Its job is to suck water from the lake and do the heavy lift, pushing it 1,100 feet up the nearby mountains. From there, gravity takes over. The water flows south through open canals, built with an incredibly precise slope, a drop of just one inch every 100 feet, to keep the water moving naturally. When it reached a valley, they built massive siphons to dip the water down and back up the other side. When it reached a river, they built aqueducts to carry the artificial river over the natural one. But in the desert, the sun and the sand are your enemies. 
Any exposed water would evaporate or be absorbed in hours. So, the lining of the canals was the most critical phase. The canal bed was lined with thick, waterproof concrete panels, with the expansion joints between them filled with hot bitumen sealant to prevent a single drop from seeping out. In total, over 200 miles of canals and pipes were laid, a concrete artery designed to lose as little water as possible. In 1964, after 11 years of construction, the final gates were opened. When the first rush of water from the north finally flowed through the cracked, dry canal beds of the south, regions erupted in celebration. It was the fulfillment of a dream. Farmers who had left the land returned. Where there once was only dust, tens of thousands of acres of farmland turned green. The national water carrier was the backbone. It allowed Israel to build new towns, new cities, and create a thriving agricultural industry in a land once thought hopeless. It also spurred a new grand structure of innovation, drip irrigation. Invented in Israel to save every single drop of water from the carrier, this technology is now used all over the world. From above, a long green ribbon now winds across the Golden Desert. The artificial lifeline had worked. It had changed the nation. But the dream had a problem. The national water carrier was too successful. The nation grew, agriculture boomed, and combined with massive droughts, they were draining the Sea of Galilee faster than it could refill. The grand structure that saved the nation was now at risk. So Israel made a second, even bolder gamble. If the freshwater river was running dry, they would build a new kind of river, one that pulled its water from the sea. Starting in the 2000s, Israel began building some of the largest and most advanced desalination plants in the world. This is the grand structure of the 21st century. Here, seawater from the Mediterranean is taken on an incredible journey. It's forced through hollow fiber membranes to block algae and bacteria. Then it's sent to the heart of the system, reverse osmosis. Under immense pressure, the seawater is forced through semi-permeable membranes. The pores are so small, only pure H2O molecules can pass, leaving all the salt, metals, and chemicals behind. The water that comes out is so pure, it's empty. So, they reintroduced minerals like calcium and magnesium to give it a natural taste before disinfecting it and sending it into the national water grid. Today, over 80% of Israel's drinkable water comes from the sea. And this is the final brilliant twist. The new grand structure has not replaced the old one. It has saved it. Today, these desalination plants are so powerful, they create more fresh water than the nation needs. So they pump the excess into the national water carrier and in one of the greatest engineering reversals in history they now pump that desalinated seawater north up the country to flow back into the sea of galilee refilling the lake that has given the nation life for 70 years from a $420 million gamble to make the desert bloom, to a multi-billion dollar system that refills its own natural sources. Israel's water story is one of continuous, audacious engineering. It is a grand structure in constant motion, a man-made river that first changed a nation and now has changed the sea itself a truly incredible story of how survival sparked a wave of innovation that is now changing the world. What grand structure should we explore next? Let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this journey, be sure to subscribe to Grand Structures. Thanks for watching.